Coach is Rick Stewart of All Access Coaching. I'm really excited to bring you this free video and make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data as far as what coaches want. And also, if, you can, if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll start doing weekly YouTube clinics for free. And if you hit the like and subscribe button, you'll get notified when we upload new content. We're uploading three or four videos every week. You know, why don't we run the power? Um, it's another off tackle play. Uh, and, and, and guys, I actually, this, this play originated I, when I was at Dover High School back in 96. Um, well, I, was, I actually ran a spread, but we ran some wing tee stuff prior to that year. In fact, we'd run some wing tee stuff when we get a lead or something. I'd go on the wing tee and actually run the ball and, um, and run, the, run the clock out. And, and a coach from uh, Louisiana, I'm going to give him credit, named Jim Beck, come in. And uh, he'd been a head coach. He's like 10, 11 years older than me and show me this play. And then, man, I've, I've kept it in ever since, and I love it. And, and I'll, I'll tell you more about it as we, as we get into it. Uh, the big thing, it keeps teams from stacking outside the wing. You know, you'll have some people that'll have, you know, you know, multiple people have a corner and another guy outside or maybe an outside guy and then a corner and, it, you know, whatever else is safety. And so this is more of an inside play inside that, and it takes advantage of angles. Again, I love that. Uh, and that's what this next, next line says, says good angles for the linemen. Uh, and so I, we're always looking for for angles, and I know you guys are too. And and so I'm a I'm an offensive lineman. I played uh, uh, college football at Arkansas Tech, and 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 I was thinking some of the stuff we did. You know, man, I, if we had angles, it'd be better. And that's what I try to do with my kids. I try to give them the the best advantage in in the game, and that's why we run this play. Uh, but also, um, um, I want to put them in a great position to win. And if you're asking some kids to dominate somebody and they're not made to do it well, then you're going to lose that battle a lot. And so I always try to do stuff to make it better for our kids. Uh, the wing back folding under helps on the D tackle or linebacker. And so it's different than a lot of people think the power. This is more like an ISO play. And, and I, somebody called it power one time, and that's what we called it, and that's what I kind of went with. Um, our power is, is our fullback actually leads, but also our wing back folds under. Our wing always folds under, and he picks up uh, either the defensive tackle or a linebacker. And, and this year – is mainly a linebacker because our 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 linemen on, on our on our strong side or our weak side were good enough to handle people one on one. They didn't need much help. But sometimes I'd we go ahead and do it anyway, uh, just to make a double team at the point of attack to make create a bigger gap for people to uh, to run the ball. Uh, teams that read guards and cannot cannot read the guards on this play. And that, and, and you guys that are uh, big time wing team people, you know people reading your guards and stuff. This play uh, nobody is pulling, and so everybody's basing and then and moving their feet and doing stuff and scooping on the backside. And I'll go into more of that here in a minute. And so they can't read it. So it's a hard, hard play for people to, to, to scheme and read where, you know, the buck sweep, they can see those guards pulling or the fullback trap where uh, the guards pull in and they're filling a gap. Uh, this one, there's no pulling. And so it kind of keeps people from reading it. And I have pulled a guard before and to add another guy to the block, but usually I don't, and you'll see why I'm going to show you some of this stuff and, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, and, and then I put the last thing, this is more like a traditional ISO play. Uh, if, if you're a, if you're an I guy and, and you ran a certain play, this is this is more of a, a power play or an ISO play where our fullback is going to help block a, a, a second level person and um, and create a bigger gap. And it was just another play I liked. And, and I'm a, a real heavy run physical guy. And so uh, this is a play uh, that I started doing and, and I've done it for a long time. We had a lot of yards on it. And I think I have some uh, some information on that. This is our two tight end set with uh, with our power. And so, guys, one of the, let me go. Let me go to the end zone copy so you can see a better look. All right. So this guy's a three technique, and then you got a guy that's like a you know a, a seven, and then you got a wide, wide guy. And then you got these two linebackers here. Now, this is Mountain Home, and actually their linebacker was really good this year, and um, and we really had to keep our eye on that kid. And I told our wing, I told my guard that he he was on his own because that linebacker was too good for us to wait and let the fullback to get to him. And so. Um, we kind of worked through that stuff. Um, so they actually been they were they were an odd front, and then because of us, they actually added another lineman in and um, and put a bigger guy in against us. So I'm gonna go a little a little slow right here so you can kind of see. So everybody's going out, and of course the tight end blocks way out there, which is fine. It makes a hole bigger. You see that the guard already hooked the three technique. See him already working. He's already got that guy hooked. See the gap already coming. So now, even if the, with our rules, but I knew we could handle this kid. 
our wingbacks coming under to get number 28. Boom. Now y'all see the gap. Now the fullback sees 28 getting blocked, so now he's working to the next level, which is this guy. Um, and so we know that that guy is going to work up to here, all right? And so, you know, since I'm on huddle, I can actually um, use that. So now he's working all the way up to here because he sees this guy blocked. And then our back needs to miss, make this guy miss. So everybody's blocked. Our wing back does a really good job. Our wing back's a really good blocker. There goes our fullback. Our, our halfback reads the block. And he's gone. So I'm gonna go again. So you guys can kind of see. So against an even front team, he's gonna hook him. He's gonna block out. He's gonna block way out. He's gonna check the tackle up to linebacker. He's looking linebacker to corner or safety, whoever feels quicker, but he's looking at that corner mainly. Um, and I have to be simple with our fullback because he's he's not the smartest guy. And so you got I think you gotta be simple again on that because he too much to process, he will not process. So here it is again. And it's a touchdown. I'm gonna go ahead and show you this. We line up in weak, and I would shift to strong. So we <laughs> we did some of this too because we wanted people to go to our wing side. And so most teams they go to the they put their best players toward the wing side. And so this one we actually shift out of it. And so what this team was doing is they're putting their better players toward our wing side. And so we know they had lesser players over here. All right. So again, he's blocking on, turn them in. He's working all the way out here and he's working to here. So look at all those angles, guys. Now he's going to work up to the linebacker, but he's going to check this defensive tackle. Then my offensive guard's really good. So again, and then our center's working up. And since there's no linebacker in the hole, he may get this guy. If he gets the guy, that's a bonus. Now he's working up and he's working under. And then our tight end is going to try to get underneath that five technique. And we're not going to block this guy. That's a lot of lines, but that's what it should look like. I'll go slow. Okay, they didn't block it right. They, and, and what it is, they kept moving around and I, they should have went out, out and I got, and later on we fixed it. But this, so if they mess up, so what they thought is, is, is that, that this guy, since it's like an odd front and there was, you know, there's, he thought the tight end said, Hey, I got this guy. Then he didn't see this guy out here. They double teamed up. And so that happens sometimes, but that's not how we want to block it. Wing still goes under, fullback goes under, halfback goes under. And that happens sometimes. I mean, it just, they, they're, they're, their rules are there, but they don't always they don't always see those. And so let me go back on that real quick. And they're supposed to go out, out, and he didn't. I'm sure the tight end, our tight end was our, a three-year starter, and he probably said, that, you know, he saw this corner way off and this linebacker that wasn't the threat, he knew that their fullback could get him. And so he said, I got him. And so he didn't have nobody else to block, so he went down. Now this one, this one's the different. This is I actually. This team every year they run a, a <clears throat> this defense too. So right, let me go over this real quick. So this is an odd front, but it's different and odd because guys, what they have to our wing side is they've got this guy right here. It's like a three uh, or a, you know a four eye, and then they got a head up nose, and then they've got a uh, a six, and then they got a nine. And so what we did against these guys because we they always gave us trouble because they had this extra guy over here. I actually went out, out, out. So this guy went here. This guy went here. This guy went here. And then our fullback, I mean, our wingback, he went all the way to the nose man. And then our fullback went to the play side linebacker. And then he scooped up to him. He scooped up to him. He worked his way up here. 
So let's see if it goes like that. And I know we worked on this. I mean, they ran this, they run this odd defense to us. And, and, and one thing you guys will see too, you guys got certain people play every year and they line up in this every year. And I always had trouble running this play, but we blocked it this way and we had tons of success. So I'll go slow. So he, my, my quarterback has a right to check out of any play if he thinks it's a bad play. Okay. He, he has a right if he thinks there's the play we're running is not good. And so we must have had a play called. And he goes, hey, and I told him all week that the power would be, if you want to check the power anytime, it should be good unless certain things are going on. And so, I mean, I'm sure things, same thing you guys do. And so he's checking to it. So he'll check. Everybody kind of looks at the wrist thing. And let's everybody think for a second. Okay. Here we go. It's going out, out, out. Boom, boom, boom. So see that gap already, guys? Watch him double the nose. Boom. Y'all see the lane? There it is. I'll go back. And the guys, you know, I, I adjusted this based on our on the, the team that we played. And so every week, you know, we had certain rules when we played. But this one here, I go, man, we need to run this play. I don't like running an A gap, but we're going to run it A gap because of the way they're doing it, they're overloading us there. So why don't we run here? So I'm trying to take advantage of what they're doing. And so this did. And, and I told our kid all week to wham the nose. And um, uh, as you can see, he'll check to it. And then here we go. Guy gets the nose turn, and, and and our center was probably our worst ball player, and he's not very good, and uh, but he can maintain a block fairly good, and so we see there, there, there. This guy now, you see our tight end release into the backside corner. That's the last guy. This guy's never going to make the tackle. Cuts, sees twenty four, cuts off twenty four, and then he's gone. All right, here we go. We'll go live. I'll let it go live. Boom. And he's and this kid here, I mean, he doesn't look like it, but he's one of our better players. He's he's probably 5'11, 190, real physical kid, <laughs> real smart kid. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data. And if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll do free YouTube clinics. And you also get notified when I'm doing those YouTube clinics and when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.